Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my own portfolio and update you on my positions, the return of the portfolio and possible changes to this portfolio during the year. While the short-term performance doesn't really matter, I'll always like to compare the performance of my portfolio with S&P 500 as the average return of the US market in the long run. And my goal is to be able to beat this index in terms of the returns by a good margin over the next 10 years. I used pretty much all of my investment in 2020 to buy a house and therefore I started this new portfolio in January 2021 and I slowly dollar cost average into stocks that I found them undervalued or fairly valued. I will try to update you each month with full transparency and show you the exact performance of my portfolio and also my wife's portfolio, which we consider them to be one grand portfolio. I start with the big picture, the breakdown of our assets, our stocks portfolios, and finally show you our wealth simple trade accounts. Yeah, let's do this. It should be a fun video. So yeah, I first want to just start with the asset allocation. And as you can see here, most of our net worth is in real estate at the moment. And this is the house that we bought recently. Next, we have stocks, which I divide them geographically into Canadian stocks, US stocks, and Chinese stocks. And I have a small stake in crypto as well. This is the Excel sheet that I use to track my personal investments and also my wife for investments as one grand portfolio. And as you can see here, most of these investments are in red in terms of the return, as we are in a market correction. The important matrix here are the total return of the grand portfolio, which is minus 1.86% from January 2021 to date. Of course, the dollar cost average into the market and most of our deposits were basically late 2021. The portfolio annual dividend is close to $1,200 per year, which is totally tax-free as all of our dividend stocks are inside TFSA. And the yield of the portfolio is 1.65%. This is a nice graphical representation of the stocks that we hold in this grant portfolio. The majority of these positions are tech and financial stocks mixed with some REITs and consumer discretionary stocks. I absolutely want to add consumer staples, industrial and energy stocks in the future when those sectors go through a correction cycle. This is where I track the return of the grant portfolio against S&P 500 and also our initial deposits. As you can see, we consistently deposit cash and buy stocks in these portfolios. And fortunately, the performance of our portfolio was better than S&P 500 in the last few months, which is mainly due to good performance of Canadian stocks. Okay, now let's look at my personal Wealth Simple Trade account. Overall, I have close to $56,000 Canadian worth of stocks in this account at the moment. My TFSA, which is mostly Canadian companies, performed very well actually, and it is up 6.48%, which is great performance in my opinion, and analyzed pretty much all of these stocks before on the channel. On the Canadian side of the account, we have a stable performance. I recently sold Pembina Pipeline at close to 40% profit here and reinvested the profits into my core Canadian positions. Here we have Aritzia, which is a growth-focused Canadian fashion stock. I think this is a great fast-growing business. We just killed the earnings reports in the last few quarters. But in a market correction, even good stocks can go down. And I'm down 14% on this position at the moment. The next position is Brookfield Asset Management, and I have no doubt in my mind that this is stock will outperform S&P 500 in the next 10 years. I am down 8% on this position at the moment too. The next two positions are Bank of Nova Scotia and Equitable Group, which are both amazing Canadian banks. In fact, Equitable Group, in my opinion, is absolutely undervalued at the moment. I'm almost flat on both stocks at the moment. Next, I have two REITs, Granite REIT, which is an industrial real estate company with many large warehouses around Canada, US, and Europe, and Kilam REIT, which is a residential real estate company in Eastern Canada. Both are amazing REITs with, uh, with both growth potential and consistent monthly dividends. I am down on both positions, but not by much. Next, I have Power Corporation of Canada, which is mainly an insurance business with a strong balance sheet and consistent dividend increases. I am down 5% on this position too. Finally, we have TD Bank, which is the only green position in, in this portfolio, in the Canadian side of my TFSA at the moment. So I analyzed all of these stocks on, on the channel in detail before. So if you want to see those videos, I will leave a link to, this, uh, to those videos 
in the description box below. And in the US side of my TFSA, Google is the only position I hold and it is in green by 25%, which is an absolutely amazing performance. Even considering the recent market correction, at some point I remember that I was up close to 60% on my Google position. Now let's look at RRSP. Here is the situation is not pretty. I plan to hold most of my US and Chinese stocks here in the RRSP. My, big, my biggest investment here so far is Meta Platforms or Facebook, which is down 34% with a terrible performance, but I'm absolutely sure that Meta will rebound in future as it is heavily, definitely undervalued here. I think Meta is one of the most undervalued stocks you can find in the whole stock market right now. Next we have Alibaba, which I'm down almost 6%, and PayPal, which is the newest addition to this portfolio here, and I am up something close to 8%, but I don't have many shares of Baba or PayPal yet, so it really doesn't matter at the moment. My plan with all these stocks that I show you today is to hold and add to them during these dips. Even if I go down another 20%, I would not sell any of these stocks here. And I analyze each and every stock I buy, and therefore I'm not going to emotionally react to price action of these stocks. These are my assets, and I know the value of my assets, so I'm not going to sell them for low offers out there. Now, finally, let's look quickly at my wife TFSA to wrap up this video. She makes all the decision about this portfolio herself, but we discuss stocks a lot and plan our investment moves with each other. As I mentioned, we consider our accounts to be one large portfolio and manage it like that. Here she has Aritzia, of course, as a Canadian company. She also has Meta platforms, but she owns Pindodo here, which is a Chinese e-commerce platform, which this is like I don't own it personally. And Pindodo actually performed very well so far, and it is up 16% at the moment. There you are, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and my transparency in showing you all the positions I have in my own portfolio and also the performance of our stocks. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Farewell.